So do you think this could be that. this could be you know a, a bit of strategy here from the Chinese leadership, a bit of a decoy tactic? Uh, yep, we can open up trade, but you can't touch Taiwan or you can't interfere with what we do in Taiwan. That's going to place us in a tricky spot. Well, who would know, Peter? I, I can't put myself in the in the minds of uh, the Chinese Communist Party. I, I imagine they're not that focused on on Australia, uh, to be frank, uh, with the with the single exception of iron ore. Uh, that that remains the you know, the greatest touch point, I suppose, between our relationships. It what accounts for a big part of that 50% of trade. It also, of course, has not been sanctioned uh, by the Chinese Communist Party, despite all the tensions in the past few years. That's because China yeah. has real no other alternative but to import iron ore from Australia. Now, I, I think that's a vulnerability for us as well. It's a great economic opportunity. It's great that we do that. But as I say, what happens if China invades Taiwan? What happens uh, to that $100 billion a year trade uh, on iron ore for us in that event? Uh, we should be finding other markets for our iron ore, actively seeking uh, to develop steel producing in other countries so that we're, we, you know, our risks are reduced uh, in case the worst happens. Yeah. On the, on the subject, um, to an extent, of China and also defence, Richard Miles, he's pointed to a defence a personnel, a a personnel crisis within defence. It's got about a 4,000 member shortfall there. It, what, what do you think about that? Are, are we in crisis? How much more do we need? Well, look, I, I'm not uh, the expert to put precise numbers right. on, but all I know, sure. I, I'm not surprised by those figures uh, because because we have had the last few years a, a period of condemnation, if you like, of our armed forces. Uh, the upshot of the Brereton inquiry, where you know 3,000 troops had their medals stripped, despite not, uh, very few of them being involved in any even allegations of uh, poor conduct. Uh, the, you know that, that didn't set a, a good example. I know it left a bad taste in the mouth of many serving. Australians and obviously doesn't encourage people to, to join the service. So I think we've got to get back and honouring the, the service that our, that our Defence Forces make, the unique challenges that they face in life. And I really do think we, we can't hold our Defence Forces to exactly the same standards that exist in a normal workplace. They're not in a normal workplace. Mm. Uh, they're trained to, to kill people. And, and uh, we don't, I, I think, fathom that enough in our modern life and, and cherish and give thanks to them enough. I'd also, I, I mean, a bit of a side issue, but also to get rid of the rainbow morning teas, bring that back. I mean, you, 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 get, get there, there's the too much advertising for the Defence Forces that it's the rainbow morning teas. I mean, it, it, there's, too much, there's too much advertising for Defence that I see that's almost like a lifestyle choice. Come and join Defence and you'll have a good time. Young people don't join Defence for that reason. They want to be challenged. They want to make a sacrifice for their nation. And yeah. uh, I think if uh, we're going to recruit more, uh, we need to get back to those types of messages that Defence is a service of duty, uh, not somehow a, a, a step in your career path uh, yeah. to a uh, professional corporate life. No, I thought about it once, uh, leaving Year 12. I uh, thought about being a, a fighter pilot. but just wasn't smart yeah. enough. I wasn't smart enough, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wasn't brave enough. I didn't think about it, but look at people. I got a lot of respect for people like Andrew Hasty and Philip Thompson who did. Uh, we're very lucky to have. No, I like do that. too. No, no, that's a fair point. Matt Cannavan, good to see you. We're out of time. We'll talk to you soon.